Hi, in this video we will practice our digital painting skills with an easy exercise and I promise you that by the end of it all, you'll have an awesome masterpiece to add to your portfolio. Hi and welcome to part 3 of this mini-series about the ultimate beginner's guide to digital painting. My name is David Villivo and in this video we will put in practice what we've been learning in the two previous videos. And if you already saw part 1 and part 2, well, let's jump right in. All right, so when you open the document, you should be able to see what I have on my screen right now, which is the cactus with the color on the left and just the outline on the right. Let's have a look at the layers here. What we have is uh, six layers plus the background here. Now, most of the layers, the eyes are closed. If I were to open them all, you'll see that it would come a little bit messy. It's because they are stacking on top of each other. We don't need to see them all at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll look at the two first one at the beginning. Then we'll close the two first one. We'll open the two second one and final third one. And that's how we're going to do the exercise. So I'm going to start with the two first one right here. The first thing we will do here is create a layer for each of the different parts that we need to create. So we need to create a background, we need to create a cactus, and we need to create a pot. So I'm going to do that. What I want to do is create layers that are under my outlines. So to do so, you simply have to click on the layer that's under it. And by clicking on the layer icon right here, each layer will go on top of each other. I'm going to create three. So layer one, layer two, layer three. And they'll be right under the outline right here. And that's going to be perfect. Now, the next step we're going to do is going to lay, name those layers. So I'm going to start with the background at the bottom. So background. Then I'll go with pot. And finally, the cactus is going to be on top of everything. From here, what we want to do is to create simple shapes. So to do so, we're going to use the brush. Obviously, if you remember, the shortcut for the brush is the letter B. So I'm going to press B and then I'm going to go over my brushes here and I'll make sure to select the hard edge brush. From here, what we want to do, if we're doing the background, we're going to click on the layer background. It's always super important to verify on each layer you're painting at all time. If I want to paint the background, I'll go on the background layer. And what I'll do is I'm going to pick a color from the background from the illustration on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and press Alt to change to the color picker with the brush. I'm going to pick that color right here and I'm going to make a big brush. So the shortcut again for the changing the size of your brush is Control Alt and then slide from left to right. It's going to make a bigger brush. If this is not working, you can go to the part two of this mini series where I explain how to change manually your shortcuts. From here, let's just paint on our canvas. So I'm going to paint all over here. You see, I'm going all over the outline and I'm doing this on purpose because what I want to do from here is use an eraser to cut down everything that's around here. So I'll switch to the eraser. I'll press the letter E. With the letter E, I'm going to choose the brush. I'm going to choose the opaque brush. I'm choosing the opaque brush because the opaque brush, I don't have to put pressure no matter if I put a little bit of pressure or a lot of pressure, it's going to erase totally. If I were to choose a hard edge brush, because there's some uh, some uh, some transfer on it, meaning that it's going from uh, pale to opaque with the pressure sensitivity, it would go from not erasing everything to erasing everything. And what I want is really erasing everything. So I'm going to use the opaque brush. I'm going to change the diameter, put it a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to show you a new trick. To be able to make a straight line when you're painting, you can click on one place. I'm going to click right here. You see it's going to erase a little bit. And I'm going to click to the other place right here. And I'm going to hold shift in between. And it's going to create a straight line like this. So you can see that if I were doing this right here, it would do a straight line like this. This is great both for the eraser and the brush tool. In this case, it's going to help me to have those sharp lines all around it. So I'm going to just redo it here because I feel like I was just a little bit sloppy. I'll make sure that I'm on the line. That's perfect. Then I can do that. I'm going to go on the line right here. Click once, hold shift, click another time. Then I can erase this. I'll do it here again. Holding shift in between. Click once, hold shift, click. And there we go. And now I have a perfect shape for my background. So that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead, click on the layer of the pot, 
And I'm going to do the same thing with the pot. So I'm going to go over with my brush, click over my, my pot here, select the color, paint all over the, the lines, press the letter E to select my eraser. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The shortcut for the zoom, once again, it's spacebar command or spacebar control if you're on a PC. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to get closer. And I'll do the same thing here. Click, shift, click to get that sharp edge. Here I'm going to go manually. Then again, a little bit manually. Then click, shift, click to get a sharp edge. Here I'm using a shortcut. Spacebar will bring the hand so I can move my canvas around. Then click, shift, click. Click, shift, click. Click. You get the idea. I'm just going to finish it. There we go. You're using that. You're using that. I don't have to care about here if it's sloppy because the cactus is going to go on top of this. So perfect. I got the two first shape. Same thing happened here. I don't have to care about this because the cactus is going to go on top of it. So I'm going to do the cactus. Once again, I'm going to select the cactus first. Get on that layer. Select the brush. Pressing the letter B. Then Alt to select the color. There's a lot of different green here. I'm going to try to have something that's a little bit neutral. I think that should be good. I'm going to paint all over. And the same thing is going to appear here. I'm going to take my brush this time. I'm going to take the hard edge brush instead of the opaque brush. The reason is because for this one, I, have, I want to have a little bit more of a soft edge. And having the opaque brush is going to give it really sharp. But the hard edge brush, I'll be able to have a little bit more of a softer edge. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, resize my brush, and I'm going to start erasing all around here. And I'm not using the shift uh, to do the line here. I'm doing manually to just get a little bit more of a smoother edge on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all that shape. You'll see that at some point when you're going to paint, uh, you're going to realize that there's places that are hard to do with your wrist on the same place. And that's that, that moment that you want to try to rotate your canvas. So I'm going to show you a new tool right here, the rotate canvas. The rotate canvas is under the hand. When you click on it, it's going to show you there's another tool here. The shortcut is the letter R. So I can stay on my brush and press the letter R, click and drag. It's going to rotate the canvas. Then if I click B to get back to the brush, I'll be able to have a better angle for me to actually continue. Whoops, I mean E for the eraser. I'll have a better angle to continue. This is super useful to be able to rotate. So once again, letter R, you'll be able to rotate. If you want to get back to the original, you simply have to press on Escape, and it's going to bring back to the original. So R, rotate. I'll zoom in a little bit. I'm going to continue erasing. The shape all around. When I'm going to get to that corner to make sure that I do a sharp corner, I'm going to erase all the way through like this. Then I'm going to switch to my brush and I'm going to paint green instead. This way, if I'm taking the outline, you're going to see it's going to give me a really sharp edge here. And that's what I want. So sometimes it's good to just erase through the form and then paint again. I'm going to press escape to get back to the normal view. Take the eraser brush and take everything that's out here. Same thing here. I'm going to make sure to have a sharp edge. So instead of going very small and trying to erase on the corner here, what I'm going to do is take a big brush. I'm going to erase through the shape, then take my, uh, my brush for painting and repaint what I just deleted. And I'll continue right here. And that's it. That was the first step. So now we have three different layers for the three different parts of the illustration. So from there, we're going to start adding a little bit more colors. Okay, to make sure we're going to stay inside the boundaries of our illustration, because we are now doing digital illustration, we're going to have a lot more tricks than traditional. So this is great. So what we're going to do is going to make sure that our shapes that we created on different layers are locked in and we cannot paint 
outside of them. And for that, there's a very easy trick. Basically, on the layer panel, if you're selecting the layer that you want to paint in, let's say the cactus here, if you click on this icon right here, it will show the name of it. It's the transparent pixel, the lock transparent pixels. If you click on it, it's going to make sure that no matter what you're doing on this layer now, you cannot paint outside those boundaries. I'm going to show you an example here. I'm going to change the color a little bit and I'm going to start painting. And you can see now it's only in these boundaries. This is going to be great for us to be able to paint very big strokes, very big gesture without having to care about getting outside of the boundaries. So I'm going to take out that blue for now. What we'll do, we'll make sure to click on each of them. So I'm going to click on the pot. I'm going to add the lock. Click on the pot. And I'm going to add the lock. There is many other ways to actually stay inside of the boundaries. There is mask and selections. But to make sure that I'm giving you just enough so you don't feel overwhelmed, we're going to stick with for now with this only trick to stay inside the boundaries. And we're going to start adding a little bit more colors. Okay, so I'm going to start with the background. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my background here so I can click either on the layer background or if you remember, you can also use the arrow tool. And if you are not on the auto select, then you'll have to simply press command or control and then click on the layer that you want to be. You'll see it's going to change the layer. So I'm going to stay on the background for now and I'll paint with my brush. You can see that there's a little lock here. I just want to precise that this is because we added the lock. When you're adding a lock, it's going to add that little icon that says that it's lock on pixels. So let's go for the background right now. I want to add some colors. Now we already have the color panel open right here. And what I want to do is show you that we can change this to something a little bit better for us illustrators. So if you click on the little icon on the top of the, lay, uh, the color panel, it's going to open this. Then you have many different ways to show colors. Lots of them I won't go through in this video. The one that I want to show you is the color wheel. The color wheel is great uh, for us as it's showing all, all the colors. It shows also the desaturated uh, versus saturated, the dark versus, uh, versus uh, pale. Also, being able to see the color wheel like this will help you when it comes to color harmony. You'll be able to know what's the complementary color of the blue, knowing that it's going to be in front of it. If you don't know about color harmonies, don't worry. This is something that's a little bit more advanced and we'll go through into a more advanced tutorial later. But for now, if you can just harmonize yourself with the color wheel, this is going to help you. You'll have a few sliders here as well that are the hue, the saturation, and the uh, black versus uh, saturated, or I mean uh, brightness. And here, basically, you have the same thing, but within the color wheel. Now, let's add a little bit more colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my background and make sure that I'm on my background. I'll reduce the window here if I can. No, I cannot. So it's going to take a little bit more space. I'm going to reduce this here so I can just see. Oh, I cannot either. So I'll collapse them. That's perfect for you to show, show you how to do this. To collapse a window, I'm going to double click on it and it's going to collapse it. It's still there, but it's just masking it. And this way it's going to give me just more place uh, to see my layers. I'm going to put that up and so I'll be able to see more on my layers. So I want to stay on my background here. I'm going to select uh, the brush that I want, uh, which is the hard edge brush. To see your brushes, there is this here, this window, obviously, and I want to give you another shortcut here. If you click on control uh, or right click while you have your brush selected, it's going to also give you your brushes. So all the brushes that I have been painting with are at the bottom right now. Those are the three ones and I want this one. So what I want to do here is pick up the color that's at the background here and start painting it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mask the layers that are in front of it. So I'm going to mask the cactus outline, the cactus and the pot. So I can only see this and I'm going to start painting that. And it, this is the perfect opportunity for me to start doing a gradient. So as we already practice it, I can pick up a color, paint on top of it a little bit and then use that second color. What I can do also is use the soft round brush that you should have, which has a natural gradient in it. So it's going to be easier for me to paint with it and just have a gradient coming with it. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to pick up the colors that are here. There we go. And that's it. I just did that. Now I'm going to do the pot. To do the pot, I'm going to first click on my layer, make sure that I'm on my layer. And I want to paint these different colors here. So I'm going to first start with the hard edge brush. It's going to be easier. 
I'm going to pick up this color here and I'm going to start painting. So the way to do this is I'm going to imagine that my lines are already there. So I'm going to put my line back. So actually, that's going to help me. And I'm going to make a click shift to make a straight line right here. And then I'm going to paint another line here. I'm going to paint the full value here. And then I'm going to take that new color here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Trying to fill up this shape here. Trying to stay in the lines. This is good for now. The rest of it is going to be adding some texture and I'm going to show you that just a little bit later in this tutorial. So for now, I'm just going to let it at this. So we have around about that. And I'm going to finish with the cactus. I'm going to open the cactus, paint on the cactus. And for the cactus, I'll start with the saffron brush. And I'm going to go and pick up the colors that are on my cactus. So there's a little bit more of a pale color in front of it. Just like that. And then I have a darker color here. So I'm painting here with the saffron brush and doing big strokes. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to switch to my hard edge brush, pick that color to bring back that sharp hedge right here. So when I take out those lines, I'll still have a sharp edge here. And now I'm going to continue without the lines. I'm going to take the saffron brush again, take that color, paint that kind of shadow here. And that's it. We already have colors and that looks pretty good. All right, to make it even better, what we're going to do is to add some texture to this cactus. And if you are in Photoshop, I'm going to show you something absolutely amazing. You have access to a lot of premium brushes for free. Uh, so we're going to go here and add a few. You simply have to go over your brush panel, click on this icon right here and choose get more brushes. This is going to bring you to this website, which is the Adobe website. You'll need to obviously be uh, signed in with your Adobe subscription. And if you are in an Adobe subscription, you have access to all those brushes. They are amazing brushes with a lot of texture. If you are not with uh, Photoshop, uh, don't worry. Any texture will do for this exercise. I just wanted to show you guys this. So you can go ahead and download a few and go back to Photoshop uh, to try them all. Okay, and from here, you can go ahead and choose the brush that you want, the texture brush that you want. Have some fun with this. And I'm going to show you the texture, uh, the technique that I'm going to use to add the texture. The first thing you want to do is go over the layer that you want to paint. I'm going to start with the pot. And you want to create a new layer. That new layer is going to go on top. And I want to make sure that I paint on a new layer because I'll be able to delete parts of them without deleting the pot which is under it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to paint on this one. But I want to also make sure that it stays on the pot and there's a really nice shortcut for that so i'm going to show you here quickly what i want to do so i'm i'm going to first take that color right here from the pot and i'm going to paint it all over here actually i'm going to take this one so you can see even better all over here and i want to make sure that it stays on the pot right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click i'm going to hold alt in between those two layers it's going to see it's going to change to that little icon and when i'm going to click this is going to lock to this layer and now you can see that everything stays in this shape so I'm going to continue doing this. I'm just going to continue painting a little bit more. I'm going to add some texture here. You can really have fun here. That's where you can just do something slightly different than mine. At this point, the technique is more important than the actual brushes. And you have a lot of brushes to choose from. So I'm going to let you go with this one. I'm just going to add a little bit more texture like this. I'm going to create a new layer uh, in a second. I'm going to just add more texture here. I'm going to add a new layer here. Clicking on the icon, I'm going to make sure that it's locked. I'm going to press Alt in between. And I'm going to add that border right here. What's good is I can go on top of it like this, on top of it. And I can come back with my eraser to just erase a little part of it without deleting what's under it. And that's why using new layers each time is super important. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go on this one here. I'm going to delete this part here like this. I'm going to continue. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to use a shortcut to add a layer this time. It's a long shortcut, but it's a very, very good one. It's Command or Control if you want a PC on a Mac. So Command, Alt, Shift, N. 
Command Alt Shift N. It's going to create a new layer on top of the layer that I was in. So I can just continue locking this one in and continue painting. I'm going to take that color right here. I'm going to create that little border that I had right here. And that's going to be it for the pot. From here, I'm going to start painting on the cactus. Well, I might just add a little bit more texture here. I'm going to create the last one. And just adding some more some more texture. I can go through the form right here. And you see I'm going through that form right here. But I'll be able to go back with an eraser because I'm on my new layer. So that doesn't change anything. So I can go ahead and delete this. Okay, perfect for the pot. I'm going to go over my cactus. Click on it. Create a new layer on top of it using the shortcut for me. You can click on this, this icon if you want to. But using shortcut is a really good thing. So try to use the shortcut. And I'm going to continue painting here. I'm going to pick up the colors that are already here. So I'm going to paint with a little bit more texture. Having some fun. Really, if you want to use more than one texture brush, go for it. For me to make sure that this uh, is as clear as possible, I'm just going to stick to one. Uh, but go ahead, have some fun. Here, see I'm painting all sorts of texture. I'm going to add a little bit more of a darker texture on here. I'm going to open the color. And I'm going to go and shift the hue a little bit, uh, even more than that, and then get to something a little bit darker. Close that back. Create a new layer. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to show my layer first. I'm going to lock it. Paint on here. Use my eraser to erase what I don't need. Use the soft round also to give something a little bit more soft. And then continue painting with a bit more texture. So I'm going to finish this. And that's it like that have a lot of great texture. The only thing I'm going to add is those very small spikes everywhere. For that I'm going to use just the art hedge brush that I give you guys. So this one right here. You use that on a new layer. Make sure they have the color that needs. Maybe I'm going to make them just a tiny bigger than the example here. And that's it. That's the last touch that we're going to do on this cactus. Now, there is one last thing that I want to show you is how to make order in those layers. As you can see, when we're doing this, we created a lot of layers. So I'm gonna make sure that we have some more orders. I'm gonna show you how to do groups. So how to groups those layers. So what you wanna do is you wanna click first on the top layer from that group, and I'm gonna click with Shift on the last layer. They are all selected, and now I'm gonna click on the little icon beside the layer, which is the group layer. I'm gonna create a new group. And now they're all into one. So if I click on the eye here, everything is going to be in there. So I can open this and all the layers are going to be in there. So that's a great way to do it. But this is not enough. There's still lots of layers that we can actually delete at this point. So what I mean by delete is I want to make sure that all that texture that I added is actually on my cactus. To do so, you simply have to go over the top layer. And then let's say select the last one that the cactus. So what I have selected is only what I did for the cactus. So I'm going to select all that and I'm going to do the shortcut command or control plus the letter E. And this is going to put everything on one layer. So once again, it's command or control and letter E. So I'm going to do it again here. I'm going to click the first layer, click the last layer of the pot and do command or control E, command E on my Mac. And here I've been able to just put everything back together. Because keeping the layers while you're working is great, but once the illustration is over, it's going to be great to start cleaning them. So right now I have something a little bit more clean here. I can open and close the group by clicking on this little icon. And now in the group, I have only one, two, three, four, five layers with the outline that I can mask right here. So you can go ahead and try this. I also give you, if I close this one, I have you Another one here you can try and another one that you can try as well. Make sure to take your time. This is your first assignment. Have fun with it uh, and go for it. 
And that's it for this ultimate beginner's guide to digital painting, guys. If you want to follow along, you can download the files that comes with this mini series. Make sure to subscribe to not miss any of my future tutorials. And if you are ready to learn more, you can click on the video below me to get to the next tutorial where I'll teach you more advanced techniques about digital painting.